Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our City Commission of July 9th. If you would all please stand with me and recite the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. If you would remain standing for 10 minutes, 10 seconds of silence and, and keep in your thoughts Sophie DeLott, who is the young lady who was hit and killed on our bridge last week. Thank you. You may be seated. Ian, would you please call the roll? Vice Mayor Palumbo? Here. Commissioner Fly? Here. Commissioner Hanna? Here. Commissioner Hoofnagel? Here. Mayor Kennedy? Here. Thank you. Agenda item number one is a report from the Sheriff's Department if you would like to come forward at this time. And they will be presenting our June report. Good evening. I'm uh, Sergeant Tacey, and I'm producing the uh, June stats report for uh, New Rock Beach. Um, page one uh, looks like uh, we had one forceful sex offense here in, uh, in New Rock Beach, uh, one burglary, ten larcenies, and two motor vehicle thefts. I will go over the highlights for you like I normally do at the end. Uh, page two, uh, total of 22 people arrested in the Rock Beach, um, and then it lists everything down there. Um, I won't talk about what you already mentioned, the uh, DUI manslaughter that uh, occurred on the bridge. Uh, there were 923 events that occurred in the city, with 1,255 units responding to the city. Uh, I always like to mention that if you look down to uh, easy for me to say, suspicious person. Um, the majority of the top portion of that is all self-initiated activity. Um, I went ahead and added it up, that's 709 events, which were self-initiated activities. So you had roughly 214 calls for service, <coughs> roughly, give or take. I mean, some of those, uh, like, suspicious person, someone could call that in, but a lot of time that's just, just checking out with people. Um, page four. The crashes, um, obviously with more people in the city, we have uh, more crashes. I had eight crashes this uh, month, uh, all of which were in different areas, so we don't really have a problem area. But uh, if we did, it's more concentrated south of it, um, which we do a lot of traffic down there as well. Um, we had 395 citations written before the uh, city. Uh, that is a combination of 342 warnings, uh, 34 parking citations, which have gone up. Uh, we're, we're trying to address that issue. Um, 17 citations and one voting citation. Um, looking at the, the page one, um, the 10 larcenies, I'm sure you guys probably had the same question I had, you know, are we getting a problem in the city? Um, I went and looked today at every single one of those cases. Um, one of which uh, was, well, we'll start with the uh, motor vehicle thefts. There were two in the city, um, one previous, the previous month, and we actually had the car come back into the city, mm -hmm. and we made an arrest of six sus suspects in the city. So that's six of the arrests. Um, one of the stolen vehicles was actually our golf cart that they uh, attempted to take. Um, there's no suspects on that. Um, and the third one was relatively new. It's already recovered. Uh, forensic reports are out. We're waiting for those uh, reports to come back. Um, Burglary to vehicle, um, <coughs> smashed window. It was domestic related. Um, I believe that the uh, suspect is known. Uh, we had a burglary of decorations inside a porch area, uh, enclosed porch area. We had two of those. Uh, they actually developed a suspect. A uh, search warrant was written and executed, and they found the property and made an arrest on those two cases. Um, 
majority of these cases, I think there's five cases that are not closed or suspects on them. Um, two of which are stolen bikes, one from the uh, red line and wagon, one's from a, uh, a person's home. Um, the open case of the uh, RUTV that was attempted to be stolen. One unlocked burglary vehicle um, where sunglasses were taken. Uh, the forensic report on, is out on that. And then the uh, stolen vehicle that just came back, we just recovered with that forensics waiting on that. So looking at the high number, we actually have about four or five open cases, two of which were bicycles. I'm not downplaying that, but that's kind of more of a kind of opportunity. So I don't really see a pattern developing or anything like that. Does anyone in the commission have any question or comment for the sheriff? Sure. Stacy, good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your uh, report. And just to remind the audience when you're here that from 6.45 until 7, every commission meeting, you have an opportunity if you come at that time before the meeting to speak with the sheriffs in the midway. Just so you know that for the next time. Okay, thank, thank you. you. We're going to go to agenda item number two which is public comment any member of the audience may come forward give their name and address and state any comment or concern that they may have concerning any matter over which the city commission has control excluding agenda items and each speaker will have a limited time of three minutes thank you Hi, good evening my name is kelly sister i live at 448 harbor drive south i have some concerns about utility on the grounding that I emailed to the commission and the city staff in mid-May, and I wanted to follow up on that tonight and also see if I could get some clarification on our city's two budgeted underground projects. I've finally gotten some detailed answers about the capabilities and the limitations of the new ground-mounted electrical transformers that Duke Energy will be installing, and I've been communicating with their distribution engineering manager for major projects in coastal areas. Her name is Holly Columbia. Ms. Columbia provided me with detailed and candid answers to six questions I asked her about our new transformers and our new Gulf Boulevard project. I felt I needed to find out more about the possible impacts to our grid following a storm surge event. I just emailed the commissioners before the meeting and uh, again this evening um, with Duke's response. Uh, so I hope you will take the time to review that soon. Um, I don't know. Uh, we haven't seen a, a big storm surge event since 1993, so I don't know how many people are, are concerned about storm surge anymore, but during the next storm surge, we will have at least half of our Gulf Boulevard transformers placed on the ground, and that's our main distribution line. The rest of the city will not have power if Gulf Boulevard goes down for an extended period. So that's the nature of my concerns. I think we need to know more about the capabilities of the underground system, and that's why I put so much of my own time into getting accurate information about this. Our city's budgeted for two distinct underground projects in the CIP budget from last year. Gulf Boulevard was budgeted for the big $4 million project. It was to be funded by Penny 3 money. And then the Walsingham Road was a smaller project. I believe that was $1.5 million. And that could not be funded by Penny money since it wasn't part of the Gulf Boulevard beautification plan for Pinellas County. So what I was wondering is, did the city have to pay more than the $4 million that was budgeted for the Gulf Boulevard project, and did that cause the cancellation of the Walsingham Road project? I couldn't find any info about the Walsingham Road project in the proposed city budget for this year. I would appreciate an update tonight from staff about both those undergrounding projects. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. Is there anyone else at this time who'd like to come forward? Yes, Hi. good evening. Uh, my name is uh, Paul Clayman. I reside at 469 20th Avenue, just a few blocks up. My concerns are uh, with the uh, lagoon behind here. I know you people have been battling this. I got a letter yesterday from the uh, Marine Patrol. Three minutes isn't very much time. But you can see all the numbers I have and call them. This thing is really getting out of hand. I mean, you got to realize, five, ten years ago, you didn't have the boats you got today. 
These boats got 200 horse, 300 horse, double motors on them. I had power boats. I have my New England accent. I've been in Florida 43 years. 20 of them in Cape <coughs> Hall before they had, you know, just canals, the eight lakes. Uh, off of McGregor just before Sandville for 10 years. Up here at San Key for, for years, I overseen Bella Rosa, half of you, Grand. You know, the best getaway from there was the clear water. Standing water up to your chin, you see your toes. Indian rocks, rocks. Okay? <laughs> rocks. I have the home, been here four years. Been at, and I'm all for fun. But when they're pulling rafts, even speedboats that belonged out in Cyprus Gardens. I mean, you got wakes coming. Last year I had to replace back part of my back lawn. Not only destruction of uh, seawall and caps, I replaced two of them with jackhammers. Put two of my own pools in there. Run the biggest jobs from Naples, overseeing all this stuff. I know what's going on. Most of the people don't. Like I say, if time comes, you give people an inch, they take a mile. We've got more people coming in, they're coming from all over. And they don't care. They don't care. When I go out on my dock and say, hey, look at the boats rocking. Look at floats loose. You know what I get? I get the, I get the bird. Huh? I tell you, it's just unbelievable. Just last weekend. Gentleman's pulling with two big 200 horse motors on the back, a big float, 10 foot float with about six young kids on it, creating such a wake. I go out there and I flag him down and I tell him, I said, hey, look at, look at the boats rocking, look at this, look at that. Guy in the canoe almost flipped the guy over. We got more borders out there now, flat borders and all. That's what you call recreational. Not these big power boats running around. And you know what the irony, the, the kicker was? Seven o'clock at night, this was Fourth uh, of July. They're, his buddies, they all come with boats. There was four boats pulled up, okay? All afternoon with these kids going around. Good thing the tide was halfway up. I had, had uh, wakes over my dock. At seven o'clock at night, I happened to look out. I think uh, Mayor Kennedy knows where I live. I'm on the second floor, I look down, and I see flat waters, three of them. The guy that gave me all the lip got his kid, the teenagers, standing in the middle of flat board, rowing with little kids sitting on the front of them when everybody was gone. Huh? Yeah. I know where when, you're when everybody there. was gone. So I walked out to my dock and I said, hey, get in your boat now and go around. Have some respect. Have some respect for your fellow boaters. And I hope something can be done. I know it's not. The signs out there are backwards. They have no way coming in. And they, don't these people think that marine life? Three weeks ago, five manatees. Two of them had prop marks all over the back. My neighbor was spraying them down with water. Something has to be done. Fun is fun, but destruction is destruction. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Is there anyone else who'd like to speak at this time? Please come forward. Good evening, Bob Griffin, 375 La Hacienda. Um, some people were talking to me about some of the events that were coming up around Christmas time. I didn't really pay attention until I uh, went home and studied it a little bit. Um, I mentioned it to uh, Cookie by email. Um, the uh, big garage sale has been moved, which I think is a good idea. Um, I used to participate. Lately, I just throw it away. Um, however, um, I would, I've been wanting to come here and just make a single comment that I think our garage sale, <clears throat> I think, should be limited to one day. Okay. When I first moved here from Hillsborough County to Pinellas, I noticed that people do garage sales on Fridays and Saturdays. Uh, I think on Sundays we just extend, half the people still participate, I don't know if they really want it, they do have a habit, um, but I would vote for a single day. These other cities that are around us, if you took the time to research Bel Air, Bel Air Beach, Bel Air Bluffs, uh, maybe some others, they do one day, and I think one day is enough in my opinion. Um, we've played with some dates, moving uh, the lighted 
Christmas tree event around, and um, I looked at that. I don't really see anything worth commenting on. My wife wanted to make a comment that by moving the um, lighting of the Christmas tree to the day after Thanksgiving, she wanted to remind you that that's Black Friday, and it may uh, be tough on some of the shoppers that show up at 6 a.m. to go shopping. I'm usually not one of them, but I uh, just wanted to point that out, that it's Black Friday, and that it may be a problem for shoppers, so to speak. Um, did I understand that we're moving the lighted Christmas tree to Cove Park? Can I ask that question? Or not? No, we're not. Huh? No, we're not. Okay, same. Where's that? Yeah. There was just some confusion over that. And believe it or not, people call me. Probably not as much as you, but um, I did get calls already about the uh, when is the garage sale event, things like that. Um, by the way, the calendar that's on the city website is a very good one. Very simple to read. And uh, anybody has any questions, it's just the, the related information that would be important for somebody to go to. It's a very good uh, calendar. Uh, on that subject, um, everybody knows I do the uh, city newsletter. Um, the city has a, web, has a newsletter that comes out, if I'm not mistaken, on October 1st. And promoting these November, December events, people may forget about them and stuff like that. If you consider running an ad with me, I always give the city a big discount. So um, I come out November 1st. It would help people know about the November <coughs> events. And one more thing, the, uh, the Christmas cards that we do citywide, they'll be coming out again immediately after Thanksgiving. The city does not have a Christmas card, and I've had people ask me why not. I can't really answer that question. I, once the, qu the answer was we didn't budget for it. If you need money, I'll loan it to you. I'll do the sign for free. There is an expense of $350 to the sign company, the artist. Home Depot for PVC, it's $350. I'll pay for that. As a matter of fact, I think the city should have three or four of them, one at each entrance. That's three entrances and City Hall. So if it was me, I'd say four signs. Right now, you have none. Thank you, Bob. I did speak to Thank you. Hill. Happy Bob. Sugar Cookie Day. Thank you. <laughs> that was my first email this morning. I got up and it said from Bob, today is your day, it's Sugar Cookie Day. <laughs> Was very nice. Is there anyone else in the public who would like to speak at this time? Please come forward. Good evening. Uh, Peter Souchin, 1206 Gulf Boulevard, Unit F. Um, uh, the last time I came before the commission was a few months ago, I believe. My notes are right. Uh, was in April. And uh, I spoke about bicycle safety on Gulf Boulevard. And I'm coming back to speak on that same topic. Um, I thought it was um, moving that the mayor asked for a moment of silence for the young woman who was killed uh, on the on the bridge a couple years back. It struck me as a good reminder intro. <clears throat> about bicycle safety and the importance of it, because you never know what's going to happen. And when I spoke last time in April, uh, I spoke rather earnestly and after some research and talking to people rather naively about trying to get some bicycle lanes on Gulf Boulevard between Walsingham and 28th Street. There are proper bicycle lanes in Canadian Rocks Beach from Walsingham down south, because the road allows that. I found that. And I did my own measurements, actually, between Walsingham and 28th Street. And the road varies between 3 feet to 4 feet. It's, I guess, construction isn't perfect. But um, no sooner had I sat down after that, my comments at the April meeting than someone rather experienced, former commissioner, said, those aren't bike lanes. Those aren't bike lanes. It's not going to happen. You're never going to get bike lanes on both Gulf Boulevard. I was taken aback, but it turns out he was right. Um, subsequently to my comments, Dean Sharman replied, sent me a nice email, said, I'll read it for the record, in response to your inquiry at the city commission meeting of May, oh, sorry, it was May 14th, Gulf Boulevard and <coughs> IRB does not have a bike lane. The areas outside of the NS travel lanes is a paved shoulder and cannot be marked or signed as a bike lane as the areas do not meet the standards for a bike lane. As you may be aware, the City Commission did not authorize any changes to the travel lane widths during the recent Gulf Boulevard study presented by Pinellas County. Hope this information is helpful. Thank you. Um, 
subsequently there was a visioning meeting uh, session a couple weeks back. I'm, I'm sorry I couldn't attend. I read the story. It was well attended. And in the last article, the last line of the article was said that pedestrian and bicycle safety was also discussed. Um, try to keep in time, I found it rather ironic that the card that Forward Pernella sent featured no less a bicyclist on a bicycle line. So I'm in a bit of a quandary. Um, we're interested in bicycle safety, but it seems that all avenues for putting bicycle lanes or some sort of markings between Walsingham and 28th are blocked. It seems that it's a fait accompli. So my question is, it's not rhetorical, it's not snarky. What's the point of a vis visioning session if those options are closed? And, um, and this has been investigated going back to 2018. There was a report on ABC News, and I think this is apt, that dangerous by design, no bicycle lanes putting cyclists in harm. And it goes on about what happened in Gulf Boulevard. And it's, it's, it's a... I hope some solution could be found in, in the further visioning sessions that go forward. I'm presenting this to the commission because I think it starts here. If there's some interest in finding some solutions to creating some sort of signage or other, um, without widening the boulevard, I understand that's, that's closed off already. There's a lot of opposition to narrowing that center lane. But we see the bicyclists on those big fat tire bikes and they're they're just toppling the up the road when I see them and when we hear tragic stories about Sophie, it's only a matter of time that I think there'll be more serious tragedies on Gulf Boulevard <coughs> between those avenues. So I hope as we go forward that people can revisit that and find some ways to, to improve cyclist safety, whatever ways that means. Thank you for your Thank attention. you, Peter. And thank you for your comment. Is there anyone else who would like to come forward at this time? I Good evening. John Fansfield, 448 Harbor Drive South. In March, over 70% of Madeira Beach voters chose term limits when they passed this referendum. And in the referendum, it said, the mayor and district commissioners shall serve no more than three consecutive regular terms <coughs> and shall not thereafter seek re-election for a period of two years. That was an overwhelming majority of voters who wanted term limits. And Missouri Beach is smaller than Indian Rocks Beach and also has two-year terms for the commissioners. They chose a term limit of six years, which I think is a good <coughs> reasonable. The subject of term limits was brought up at our January regular commission meeting. At the start of the discussion, Randy noted that 77% of Florida voters chose term limits for the Florida legislatures. Again, an overwhelming majority want term limits. We know these issues have pros and cons. Uh, one resi resident said term limits disenfranchise a voter when they want to keep a commissioner on a commission. But if you don't allow a referendum on term limits, you are in effect disenfranchising all Indian Rocks Beach voters on this issue. After the term limit discussion in January, the mayor and commissioners said respectively, they will come back at another date on this or put it on a March post-election workshop or work session discussion. We realize that term limits can turn out current commissioners. And this is a personal interest and is why some commissioners might not want this. However, it's been five months and I now urge commissioners to follow through on scheduling a workshop and a referendum on term limits. There's time to get a referendum on the next ballot if you act now. As Commissioner Robles said, let the voters decide. And I hope you do let the voters decide. Thank you. Thank you, John. Is there anyone else who'd like to come forward at this time? I'll follow up on that. Bill Robel, 112 13th Avenue. Uh, yes, I think that'd be a great idea if we did put that on the ballot and let the uh, citizens choose whether they want the commission to sit up there for six, eight, 10, 12 years. And also on the bike lanes, I think we can solve this whole problem if instead of having a bike lane, we extend the sidewalks three feet and let all the bikes ride on the sidewalks. 
Thank you. Thank you, Phil. Is there anyone else at this time who would like to speak? If not, I'm going to close the uh, comments and we'll go on to agenda item 3A with a staff report from our city attorney. Thank you, Mayor. Um, briefly, uh, <clears throat> I'll be speaking this week at the Florida Municipal Attorneys Association on ADA and website accessibility. Um, that, that's an annual conference I attend in, in conjunction with my colleagues. Uh, one of the benefits to attending that conference is in addition to what I'll be lecturing on, several other topics are coming, <coughs> including a uh, legislative summary, and often it helps give us some perspective on things we may have overlooked or things that develop during the last week of session. So uh, perhaps there may be some updates coming to you uh, following my attendance of that. I'd also like to personally announce um, that in the last, uh, last month it was announced that I was selected for the Leadership Florida program, uh, for the Leadership Florida Connect Class 10. Um, through that, I may be missing, I don't think any of the days overlap, but in the event we have a special meeting or a budget hearing that it overlaps with, one of my colleagues will be covering as I uh, make connections and represent this community and my firm uh, throughout the state, meeting leaders from across the, the region and the state at, at large. Uh, beyond that, I continue to work with your city manager on the legal issues presented, and we are working to move things forward so that as we enter budget season and otherwise, uh, all legislative priorities are advanced. I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. We have the commissioner, Vice Mayor, do you have any, anybody have a comment or a question for the city attorney? No? Okay. Greg, if you'd like to give your report. Sure. Congratulations, Brandy. Okay. Uh, recognition that you received. Yeah, let me just give a three or four updates. Uh, about three weeks ago, I provided the commission a written spreadsheet on vacation rentals. And I'll just talk about that briefly tonight. Uh, with the enactment of the local, local ordinance, uh, we continue to track, seek out individuals that are operating vacation rentals. The report I sent you um, on Monday, and the group numbers grown since then, we had at that point 104 vacation rental operators that we were dealing with. And out of the 104, 57 were in complete compliance. And the rest of, the, of that number, out of the 104, they're at various stages. And per the email that I sent you, I'll give instructions to staff. There's three people primarily involved in it. One code enforcement officer and two finance related folks. The, the people that are on the list of the 104, they have until, I think I gave until, <coughs> excuse me, until July, I think the 26th, if I'm not mistaken, somewhere along there, to be in complete compliance. But I will tell you that uh, since Monday, we found nine more that are operating, and the more uh, transactions of property, it just seems like we have more and more and more of those. So staff is actively, actively working to uh, make sure that they are in compliance and I'll continue to provide the commission a spreadsheet with an update probably every two or three weeks so you'll, you'll know what's going on. Um, second thing is uh, we spent, and I think the, the uh, city attorney and the city clerk gave y'all a report a couple of meetings back that I missed about uh, computer related issues, websites, those kind of things. And the, so one of the things you may have seen in the newspaper recently is that uh, cities across really across the country but particularly in the state of florida have been their websites their databases everything have been taken over by cyber security hacks and usually what that results in is the city will play basically what's ran a ransom to get their information back we have a pretty aggressive cyber security program in the city we've had it for a while one of the things that i'm going to do though is in a couple of weeks uh, set up a meeting with uh, our IT professional that works with us on our uh, IT related matters, Dan Carpenter, and I've invited him. He's accepted for Nick Paloma to be involved in because Nick's that's the world that Nick works in. And we're going to go through and look at everything we're doing and make it make, make sure that we're not missing something that we need to do. And all the other comment I make about that is um, this has got to be such a uh, matter that really every government entity is dealing with is that uh, public risk management, which is the insurance pool that we have, we actually have insurance coverage now in that pool for cyber security attacks. 
It's a ten thousand dollar deductible and a, up to a million dollars worth of coverage to do that. Uh, we're a little different. One of the things that helps us if somebody's going to uh, do a, a cyber attack is they could they could hit us. We had a group that tried to take over some of our stuff a couple of years ago, but we're not as likely because they normally try to go after agencies that have police and police records and data files and and fire departments and those kind of things. But just want to let you know that we're aware of that. We have we have things in place now that we're going to circle the wagons and make sure that we have everything that we need to hopefully fend off as much as we can. I think Nick would testify that there's no perfect way to fend this off, but if we're going to look at what we're doing, how we do that. The, uh, the big check over there on the side has been updated. We brought in an additional $29,000 in grants, one from the Pearl County Recycling uh, Organization, one from the Tampa Bay Regional Planning Council, and one, of the one from the state of Florida uh, for a, li a library grant. So that's $29,000 more. On um, uh, undergrounding, to get back to the question that was raised earlier, no city funds are being used on the Gut Boulevard uh, undergrounding project. That money was set aside in case we need it. We're not going to need it. Knock on, knock on wood. Uh, we did, as part of the uh, preparation of the proposed budget, look at the possibility of underground utilities when you come across the bridge on Walsingham. This is cost prohibitive. Uh, just doing that stretch is over a million dollars, so that's not in the budget. And you know we're always open to grant possibilities and those kind of, those kind of things. So the 350,000 that we had sitting kind of set aside, that money's been rolled back into the CIP funds for other projects. And the last uh, comment I'll make is. Uh, back to one thing we talked about earlier, and the deputy, when he the district report gave uh, comments about all those apps, I would just ask again that the public lock up their vehicles. Both vehicles that were taken had keys in them. My neighbor who had his pickup truck stolen had the keys in the ignition. And all these folks are doing, just to remind the public, is they, they roll into town usually from St. Petersburg, Largo, Largo, and other places. And there's usually four or five of them. They get out of the car, they walk, they walk door to door, and they pull the door handle. And if you're the lucky winner that you've left your vehicle on a lot, they're going to take whatever they get their hands on. And unfortunately, if they don't get your keys right off the bat, they can get your dummy key and take it and go pay somebody and get a key and come back the next night and get it. So if we just would lock them up and particularly not leave the key in the ignition, we would not have the Auto they would just move on. That's all I have, and I'll be happy to answer any questions. Any of the commissioners have a question for the city manager tonight? Commissioner Bell? Yes. Okay, with that, then I'll go to the report of the city commission. Commissioner Huffman, what would you like to? Uh, sure. Uh, I just want to confirm with Randy that um, there is a provision in our code for the community to petition to have a referendum put onto the ballot. Is that correct? Uh, yes, that's my recollection of your code. Uh, there is a means um, in statute and in your code for Yeah, I think so. Petition. I'm pretty sure there is. I was looking at it. Um, so for if there's a desire to have a referendum, you're not required to have the city commission do it. But there's a way to do it. It's obviously something that's causing some uh, desire on both parties. Um, you have the power of the people to make that happen if you'd like to do that. Thank you. Commissioner Flagg? Um, I just wanted to say um, I wasn't here for Fourth of July. I most always am. And uh, there were a lot of residents, I understand, from photos to see all the great beach cleanup and especially our city truckloads of garbage and debris from fireworks that seemed way over the top. So I wanted to thank Greg for getting all people out, the city people out for after the 4th of July, and especially uh, even people from outside of our city came to help with cleanup, both 4th of July and the day after. So it speaks volumes about the volunteer work and the, and the great things people are doing in our city. I appreciate it very much. Thank you, Commissioner Fly. <coughs> Commissioner Hanna. I did know what she said. You know, great job on the city's part. and. Uh, we had seen some photos that were 
shocking to say the least of what uh, citizens who visit uh, the beach left behind uh, after that. It was, it was shocking to say the least. And our guys and our uh, citizen volunteers who went with passing out bags and everything did a great job. But uh, if you haven't seen those photos, uh, maybe we can make those available to you now if you weren't at the beach. Uh, just surprising that our beach would be left in the condition it was. And our guys uh, just did a sterling job and worked most of the day, if I understand right, to get it cleaned and back to its pristine condition. So, good job. Thank you. Vice Mayor Lumba. Yeah, I would echo what everybody said about beach cleanup. The city did an amazing job. Um, the volunteer organizations and the sponsors who sponsored that as well. Um, thank you to everyone. It's a pretty long list, and hopefully uh, the mayor has it published somewhere. We could publish it, everybody who contributed to, to make that um, uh, a successful effort. And again, thank you for the city. The team there is just amazing what they do and how much work they put in. And if I was out there for an hour, I think, passing out bags and needed 25 bottles of water. And what these guys do for hours and hours and hours is amazing. Um, the second point was, you know, there was unnecessary fireworks, I guess, about the bird nesting, and I don't understand why people just, uh, you know, there's big signs and ropes and volunteers, and, um, you know, I know the sheriffs stepped in it as well, but it, it just, I don't understand why people just can't, you know, walk 15, 20, 50 feet away, and, um, you know, I, I know it's really hard to try to reason with somebody with fireworks and potentially alcohol um, in that situation, but, you know, uh, I think we should all do what we can to make sure we keep our beach and our wildlife safe. Um, and lastly, on a personal note, this is just a, you know, when you live in a town or a city, you, you have different things, but we live in a community. Um, Valerie and I lost a, uh, a dog uh, a couple of months ago, and one of the artists from uh, our beach art center took it upon herself and came to find out after the fact that she had also done it for the Huffnagles when they lost their dog. And uh, Sheila Tolbert um, painted a beautiful memory for us on her own time and took a picture and sent it to us. And, you know, I think sometimes we talk about big issues, little issues, but we have to remember we're all neighbors and we live in a great community. And it was just an amazing thing for her to do for our family. And it's a memory that we will have forever. And I can't thank her enough for what she did. You're so sweet. Sweet. I'm going to talk about the, the fourth, too, just to thank all of We had, I think there was 110 volunteers, and our big sponsors were uh, Krabby Bills and the Homeowners Association, and then we had, I think there was half a dozen small sponsors, and what the staff had to clean up was incredible. And the city manager has decided in October that we are going to have a session where uh, we're going to invite the fire chief and also the um, sheriff to come in and kind of talk about the fireworks situation as we move forward in our community. So hopefully all of you will come and everyone else who is interested in that topic can come and we can kind of sort out ideas on where we go from here with that. Um, I want to say congratulations to you. That's a big deal for our city attorney. And I appreciate all you're doing on that subject. And I want to talk for just a second about Sophie Galat. And um, she worked in two places in our community. She worked at Taipan Alley. She was 17 years old. She was the only female who played on the Seminole football team. And several months ago, there was an article about her in the paper. And as Nick and said, well, I was just distraught about it. And she also worked at uh, Cafe Paris. And I'm, I am concerned about that. She did nothing wrong, you know, as we all know. And over 90% of accidents that occur like that are because of impairment or um, that being said, I am going to sit down with uh, Ford Pinellas to just kind of talk about that situation a little bit and if there is something to alert a driver who could be in that position to wake up 
and just be alert to their surroundings. I don't know if that's an option, but it never hurts to bring things up after something horrible like this has happened to a young girl that's a part of our you know, community and working here and um, loved our beach. So I did want to say that. As far as uh, the manatees, I had put on Facebook the other day, but there have been uh, an enormous amount of manatees killed this year already, and um, I had put a Facebook post of it, and many in Pinellas County. So I think that is an issue too, and um, we'll just, you know, continue to monitor that. And I know that you were sent an email from um, right. after talking to you. The, as the vacation rentals continue to go, Greg is going to continue to update us with that. And one of the comments that I would like to make to the public and that I want citizens to remember that when they have a problem, the first thing they should do is call the Sheriff's Department. I, I get emails constantly, especially this weekend for one, and not one person called the Sheriff's Department. And, it, you know, that's, we need to call the Sheriff's Department. And um, we will make sure that, you know, they're much more, um, they have been involved and just to reiterate that to them again so that we keep an ongoing communication with our residents on both sides <coughs> of that issue, okay? And with that, I am going to go to our next agenda item, which is additions and deletions, which would be agenda item number four. Are there any additions or deletions tonight? No? Okay. And then I'm going to go to agenda item number five, the consent agenda. Randy, would you please read the consent agenda? Happily, Mayor, there's one item on the consent agenda. Item A, approval of the June 11, 2019 regular city commission meeting minutes. This is the only item on the consent agenda, Mayor. Thank you, sir. Is there a motion? A motion to approve the June 11th regular city commission meeting minutes. And is there a second? I'll second. Thank you, Commissioner Black. At this time, would you call the roll? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Uh, our next item is agenda item 6A, which is a public hearing. Randy, would you introduce and read the agenda item? Happily, Mayor. Board of Adjustment case number 2019-04-04 for 316 Windrush Boulevard, unit number 6, vote slip number 1. Jeffrey Borsek, the African owner, is requesting a variance of 2 feet 10 inches into the required 12-foot side yard setback on the west side of an existing dock, resulting in a total side yard setback of 9 feet 2 inches for a new boat lift for the property located at 316 Windrush Boulevard, unit number 6, boat slip number 1, and legally described as Indian Cove Condo, North Building, unit 6, together with use of boat slip 1, property ID number 12-30-14-42680-001, <coughs> Dash zero zero six zero. This is a quasi-judicial hearing, as this body is well aware. In a quasi-judicial posture, you are not making law, but rather applying the facts to law and criteria established in your code. In this case, the law and criteria relevant for a variance. Uh, before we begin, I must ask if any of you have had any ex parte communications with the applicant concerning this application. No. 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 The record reflect all have responded in the negative. Have any of you conducted a site visit to this location for the express purpose of an analyzing this application? No. Let the record reflect all I've responded in the negative. With that, will anybody who intends to offer testimony before this body, including the applicant, their agent, city staff, etc., please stand and raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you are going to give this body is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. Thank you very much. You may be seated. At this time, I would turn to city staff to begin this presentation concerning the application. Thank you. I'll, I'll be brief. We, we provided in your packet uh, photographs, maps, illustrations. Uh, the property owners at this address are asking for, uh, they want to install a boat lift, which is in addition to an existing dock. The pro proposed boat lift will encroach into the re required side yard setback by two feet, 10 inches leaving a nine foot two inch distance between the boat lift and the side of the property line. Um, the Board of Adjustment heard this case on June 18th 
And by a vote of three to two, they recommend approval to the commission. The staff also recommended approval to the, to the commission. A lot of the interesting thing I would note to you, I'm sure the applicant, when, he, when they come forward, will explain this further. It has a quite unique history when the condo was developed. The uh, approved plans approved docks throughout the project, and that permit was issued by the county. So there was a, a, an approved permit sitting there for years. It's just that our standards are, are more you know, stringent now. Uh, so they applied for the variance. And like I said, the staff uh, recommended it. The BOA has recommended it. And I'm sure the, the applicant will have more to share. But that's really all I have to offer. Thank you, Greg. Do any of the commissioners have any questions for Greg at this time? Anybody? Okay. Uh, what I'd like is to, Mr. Borsak, if you would like to come forward at this time, <coughs> you can kind of tell us a little bit about what you're doing. Uh, basically, we're uh, installing a 12,000-pound uh, uh, vertical bolt lift, and the four piers or pier posts extend, I think it's, a, it's like a standard almost 12 feet, six inches. And it's that standard lift size that basically pushes it into the side, side yard setback. Um, but that's basically it. It's just, a, I'll do, I think there's eight slips in, our, in front of our um, building and five have lifts out of the eight. The one that, in number eight, that one had a variance of I think almost five feet to get their lift in on that side. Um, the, on the west side of ours, there's no, there's really no other boats. You can see on the map there, there's probably at least 100 feet there between where my lift will be and the, and the complex on the, which is the left side there. Mm -hmm. There really should be no intrusion for anybody, or should be no interference with anybody getting their boat in and out of, of if they slipped along our frontage. What I'm going to do, if you're finished, is I'm just going to have you sit right here, and, and what we'll do is we're going to go out to public comment. As long as, long as there's no questions from... Any of you have any questions at this time? I'm just going to wait till... Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm going to have you sit right okay. here in case there's anything for you to respond to. Is there any... I'm going to go out to public hearing now. Is there anyone in the public who would like to make a comment about this agenda item? Okay. If not, let's go back to the commission. Uh, are there any questions from the commission to, and if not, is there a motion? Uh, before we go to motions, Mayor, just to keep in, in keeping with the activity, though I have a feeling nobody will have anything to add. Uh, the city and applicant get one more opportunity okay. to, um, to, to summarize their points. Do you points. have anything that you would like yeah. to say? Okay. Any more closing there. comments? Okay. Thank you. With that. I have a question. Okay. For the, it seems like the docks are separate from the condo ownership, so you buy the split. Um, the condo units to the west is where the property line is. Are, does that set of condos also have the same setup where you you don't have a slip corresponding to the condo, but you buy a slip? We know that. I believe that's right. So the, the slips are kind of separate from the yeah. property. And the only reason that these people are asking for a variance is because there is a property line that happens to run in between all these condo buildings. It's not like yeah. it's not like it's someone's yard and it's encroaching. That's exactly right. Okay. So did we? We're Anyone? sure they need a variance in the first place. Um, staff has done that analysis. Yeah. Yeah. But unfortunately, where he's asking for the dot, there is a property line. That's what we're doing. Yeah. If he was further down, he'd probably not have this issue. Okay. Okay. No more questions. Anyone else? Go. No. Yeah. Diane, you okay with that? Okay. okay. Uh, with that, is there a motion? Motion to approve B BOA case number 2019-04. And is there a second? Second. Okay. That would be Nick, and then the second would be Bill, Commissioner Hanna. Ian, would you please call the roll? Commissioner Flagg? Yes. Commissioner Hanna? Yes. Commissioner Hanna? Yes. Vice Mayor Colombo? Yes. Mayor Kennedy? Yes. Thank you. And good luck with your votes. Thank you for coming. We're going to go on to our uh, number seven is our legislative matters, and we don't have any at the moment. And then our work session items.
We don't have any for discussion, other business, and is there a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you, Motion Thank you for coming tonight.